Today we're reviewing Crayola Signature Brush and Detail Dual Tip Markers. Keep watching! Hey my dears! So recently we spent a lot of time talking about Crayola Super Tips, but I've had these hidden away that I'd like to show you guys. These are Crayola Signature Brush and Detail Dual Tip Markers. Now the Signature line has been introduced because Crayola noticed that there were so many hand letterers who enjoy using their markers for hand lettering. Um, as a comic artist, I'm a little jelly belly. I would love to see Crayola try to uh, tap into the comics and manga interests that many younger people have. And it's really disappointing that they haven't. Hey, Crayola, you've got my phone number. So we're going to take a look at these today. And I picked these up at Target. I think I paid $14 for them. This is the 16 marker set with 32 colors because they are dual tipped and each marker has two different colors inside. We've got a brush tip and then we've got an ultra fine tip. You guys kind of know how I feel about that. And these are really designed for hand letterers. Now, I would personally say these could also be designed for comic artists and illustrators, but we're going to find out. So the colors that we're going to receive today are red with scarlet, yellow with a color they're calling star bright, pine green with kiwi, robin's egg blue with turquoise surf, Azure with Blue Bolt, Violet with Flamingo Pink, Raspberry with Coral Reef, Dark Chocolate with Brown, Orange with Golden Yellow, Jungle Green with Seafoam Green, Teal with Blue Green, Blue with Sky Blue, Plum with Purple Mountain, Primrose with Wild Orchid, Parrot Pink with Carnation, and Black with Gray. Now, I don't understand why some of these colors are in the small tip, not in the big tip, like Sky Blue. You would need to color larger areas and that brush tip would be helpful. But that is okay. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna remove the sleeve. They come in a lovely tin box with a beautiful illustration on them. Why, that's not brush lettering at all. And it looks like we're gonna have to get a parent or a big person to come help. Uh, 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 uh. Having sharp claw-like fingernails has come in handy yet again. So we're going to get that shrink wrapped plastic off our beautiful tin. I really love the dye sublimation printing that they've used on the cover. And we've got our colors in here and we're going to have what looks like two tiers of color. And um, there's a lot of space inside this tin. You could put some of your other markers like your super tips in here if you so desired. And What's neat is that um, each tip has, or each different color has a cap to signify the color. Opaque is for brush, transparent is for the fine point. So there is some thought that went into designing these, always cool. And these are fairly reminiscent of Tombow and Zig twin tip markers. In fact, I'm gonna grab those since that's the demographic they're going for. I'm gonna grab those and we're gonna take a look. So your girl actually has Marvy LaPlumes with the twin tips. She's got Zig and Art and Graphic Twins with the twin tips. And she's got Tombow ABTs with the twin tips. Now what's neat about these is that they're actually more like Zig brushables, which I'm going to try to grab for you guys. I know I have them, they're just in a very stubborn drawer that doesn't want to budge. It's been overfilled with markers. Ugh. Anyway, they're more like the Zig Art and Graphic. No, 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 I'm sorry. The Zig Brushables. I'm not going to be able to get these out. I'm sorry. They're more like the Zig Brushables where they're each side has a, a color as opposed to these where the whole thing is the same color. Theoretically, I have noticed that the finer points on most of these tend to be lighter. They get less um, dye, they get less ink, they get less pigment, whatever uh, the solution that these manufacturers use, this end tends to get less than this end, even if you store them horizontally. So it is kind of neat that Crayola has designed a box where they are stored horizontally. There's plenty of room in this box, although there are nice trays and they've been organized in a nice chromatic order that makes sense. So these do definitely seem a little higher in than your bog standard Crayola marker 
or your normal Crayola super tip. So I'm gonna start swatching these. Sw so swatch Roo time. We're gonna start with the first tier and I'm using fluid watercolor paper and I did actually find my zig brushable. So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do a follow-up video where I compare the three since people have asked me to do shorter videos that allow me to satisfy your curiosity while still getting to show off the materials in a timely fashion. So we've got red and scarlet. Uh, the barrel is black. It's got silver screening that says Crayola. The three color names, red, rojo, rouge, scarlet, escalata, escalat. The brush is a fairly firm fiber nib. And then we've got the finer bullet nib. Both put down a fairly generous amount of ink. Next, orange and golden yellow. And of course you guys know I'm gonna have to do a separate field test video to demonstrate how these marker markers handle in an illustrator setting. Whoa, that is fluorescent yellow. So that is quote unquote star bright, but that is fluorescent yellow. And I hope if you guys are watching this video, you'll check that video out as well. So we've got jungle green and seafoam green. And it does indeed seem like there are two colors per marker. They're not just capitalizing on the fact that the smaller end tends to get less ink. Pine green and kiwi. And it seems, at least so far, that the smaller end is always the lighter of the two colors. Teal and blue green. Now what I don't understand is why they didn't also make or include a blender marker that's just the solution with some glycerin in it, Robin's Egg Glue and Turquoise Surf. It seems like it would be a good addition, but I do know that we could use, say, a Sakura Koi blender the way we did in the Super Tip video, or we could use a Tombow ABT blender, blue and sky blue. Of course, we're also gonna to have to test, oh, what am I thinking? We're also gonna to have to test these to see how well they will work as watercolor markers. So that is tray one. Now we're moving on to tray two. I'll zoom in for you guys and move things out of the way. Uh, Azure and Blue Bolt. But these are really nice, vibrant colors. I'm a little disappointed that there are no skin tones included in this set uh, at all. And that is, if Crayola were to do an illustrator set, I would love to see them offer the colors they offer in the multicultural set, as well as some of the peaches from the super tips, in addition to some colors that work for hair. Oh, I forgot to read that purple, plum and purple mountain. Colors that work for hair, for eyes, for shading. I could put together a color list, in fact. Violet and flamingo pink. Although this is the first time um, I've used a fine point uh, Crayola that actually has the artist's name on it. Primrose Wild Orchid. So if you're buying this set and you want to use it for illustration, you're still going to have to have the super tips, Raspberry and Coral Reef, or the Multicultural set in order to get good skin tones. And I have, now this isn't bad, uh, Coral Reef will almost work as at least the base of a skin tone. And we do have a brown in here, Parrot Pink and Carnation Pink. I mean, these are some nice, really vivid colors, but they really work more for hand letterers and um, calligraphers than they do for illustrators. Cho dark chocolate and brown. Oh, that's not even chocolate, that's sepia. And then finally, black and gray. And 
And then we're gonna have to grab a watercolor brush pin, test this out for watercolor compatibility because in case you guys don't know, you can use the super tips that way. You can't really use uh, the larger ones, the ones designed for younger kids. So unfortunately, your multicultural set does not work very well as watercolor markers. And I tried doing that over on the blog. These though, seem like they will. At least the brush tip, let's try the bullet tip. Of course, one color does not prove the rule. All right, so red and escalata are good to go. In fact, I'm gonna grab one from each color family rather than swatching them all. Okay, we've got jungle green. Works also, not too, too much separation, although it separates, it goes from like a green to a blue green when you add water. And then kiwi, or is this sea foam? Yeah, sea foam green. But it looks like these are very water soluble. And so they can be used as watercolor markers. That makes them quite a bit more flexible, although that still does not address the skin tone problem. Blue, and then we're gonna do sky blue. And it's particularly disappointing to see Crayola try to address um, adults, as in um, like hand letterers, adult coloring book enthusiasts, and small children, and ignore the teenage demographic. That is somewhat frustrating. I know that's not what they set out to do. They never set out to win over the teens, but no one's really capitalizing on that market either. All right, Plum and then Purple Mountain. So you've got a lot of teenagers and preteens who are very interested in art and maybe their parents don't necessarily want to shell out a lot of material money on nicer art supplies that also can be toxic. So they're kind of forced to make shift with say Crayola or you have a lot of people from lower income families who are still using Crayola for their art. And while it can be done, I would really love to see Crayola acknowledge that they're doing that. So we're doing raspberry right now and try to cater to that the way they're trying to cater to brush letterers and adult coloring book enthusiasts. I mean, it just really seems like a shame. It really seems like they're ignoring the artist market when these products are designed to encourage young artists to be creative and to create. And I'm picking on them particularly because they are kind of the forerunners for um, children's art supply. Crayola has a positive name. My mom taught for like 20 something years. Her sister taught. I come from a family of teachers. Crayola is sort of the brand they recommend to parents to get. So I would really love to see Crayola step up their game. I know they're already trying to market to adults. So quit ignoring those teenagers and preteens. And it's not for lack of artists who could act as advisors either. And of course, if you are one of those intrepid young artists who stuck with Crayola, you're kind of caught in the middle. I do have some more videos here on this channel to help you out, black and then gray. Um, you can check them out under easy art tutorials, um, cheap art supplies or art tutorials for kids. And I also have some instruction and reviews over on my blog. So it seems that these markers are, uh, they are very vibrant and it seems like you can, they're water soluble. You can use them with watercolor or rather as a watercolor. Now I need to find a good blender for like my, I need to find my Tombow ABT blender probably specifically. And then we can do some blendability tests. I couldn't find my Tombow ABT blender, but I could find my Echo Line dye-based watercolor blender. And hopefully this will work the same way the Tombow ABT will work. So it requires a little bit of thinking because the way they have their colors laid out, if I wanted to do a rainbow, I'm going to have to start 
with this one and then this one and then this one and then this one and then the red now what i don't understand is why make the fine point the lighter one why not make it the darker one that you would use for detailing because you're going to cover more area usually with lighter colors than you will with darker colors and i've noticed that trying to do a blend like this it starts abrading the paper now for hand letters for brush letters i do understand why well I still don't, but it makes more sense than it does for illustrators. But it's still boggling me. I'm still having trouble with it. <laughs> so let's do, let's just do brushes, which will be less abrasion on the paper. So yellow, orange, red. Now the brushes are a little easier on the paper than the super tips would be. So that's already a bonus. Now we're going to blend out using the yellow, which actually works quite well. And then blend the red out using the orange. So already they're pretty uh, interblendable if you're going from similar um, from brush tip to brush tip. Now we're going to do the same, but we're going to try using a blender marker. So of course we overlap. You don't want to go, you don't want to put it just right next to it. You do want some overlap, helps with the blending. And then we're going to use, no, we're not going to use that. We're going to use this. We're going to use this and we're going to blend down. And I've noticed that you actually get a lot of blend, but it adds some uh, white. It pushes some of the color out. So, and we want to clean out our tip. And I think the reason for that is the echo line is a very juicy blender for water based marker so uh, you would have maybe better results if you could use a tombow abt or a sakura koi blender or even a marvi blender so other glycerin water based blender markers might be a better choice for these or crayola you could introduce your own and then we're going to turn them over and we're going to try going from bullet tip to bullet tip and there are all sorts of neat brush to do like Tombow for example because the Tombow brush tips have been around longer there's all sorts of neat blending tutorials for using those so I recommend you look up Tombow ABT blending and Tombow ABT techniques and see uh, what they suggest and then you can apply that to these I don't know why they included that fluorescent yellow though. That is very bright yellow. However, they are interblendable. You don't even really need a blender marker in order to get blendability. I have a feeling it's that brush tip that really facilitates that. So something I would really love to see from Crayola is I would really love to see an illustrator set of markers with these brush tips in a wider range of colors. So instead of having the other end, a small bullet nib, just offer 32 colors with the brush tip or ideally like 50 colors and more skin tones. I think that would be really, really exciting for a lot of young artists. I think that would um, be an interesting direction. I'm sure Crayola has done their research. So they're probably familiar with that market, but I definitely think there is some interest in there. So I will see you guys in our next video where I put these to the illustration field test. Now, again, I know these are really designed. I'm trying to get the cover off of it. These are really designed. I mean, this is an illustration. Um, let me see if I can find. Brush and detail dual tip markers. Great for detail and broad strokes. Brush tip, ultra fine tip but the example they give is for brush lettering but even on this it doesn't say these are specifically for lettering it does say perfect for lettering adding detail and crayola, crayola wow <laughs> that's a word crayoligraphy 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 my goodness 
Oh, if your hashtag is impossible to say, that's never a good sign. But I would love to see you guys do illustrator markers with these. I would love to review them. I would love to make color recommendations. I've been reviewing markers of all stripes for five years now. So hopefully I could offer some, some advice as it stands if I want to do um, water-based marker illustration using Crayola products, I gotta bust out my super tips or my multi-culti markers. So I'd really love to see Crayola introduce those multicultural colors with that brush tip. That would be amazing. And a lot of the complaints that artists have about Crayolas would disappear and it would honestly put them in a very similar position to Tombow ABTs, but not quite to Zig Art and Graphic Twins. So if you're interested in seeing how these markers stack up against some other water-based brush tip markers, keep an eye on this channel. I will be doing that review very shortly. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you guys in the field test. Bye.